today we are going to talk about congenital disorders or genetic problems in the baby during pregnancy now whenever patients come to us they always feel and we also hope so that the pregnancy will be uneventful and ultimately a healthy baby will be born this is true in more than 90% of cases that in some of the cases what happens is about 10% or so baby has some problems which are diagnosed during pregnancy or immediately afterwards and these are called genetic problems in the baby now people think that majority of the genetic problems occur if there is a genetic history in our family but this is not necessarily so one of the commonest genetic disorders that can happen and which is increasing all over the world is down syndrome and this is because the babies have one extra chromosome which is chromosome number 21 and this is also therefore called trisomy 21 and what happens in these babies these babies are born very smiling chubby etc and very lovable but unfortunately they suffer from mental retardation it is very important that we diagnose such babies in pregnancy itself there are different types of screening tests like double marker combined screening first trimester screening triple screening quadruple screening penta screening non invasive screening so all sorts of things are there and i think all of us should be discussing with the doctors the rock should be discussing with the patients regarding the screening tests of down syndrome and if the down syndrome screening tests come low risk then we usually advise to continue pregnancy if it comes as high risk then obviously confirmatory tests are required which is called amniocentesis which means taking some fluid from around the baby and sending it for chromosome analysis the other common abnormality that we see especially in the upper northern period part of india and also involving west bengal is thalassemia thalassemia usually can happen in anybody and most of the patients are carriers in fact i also would know whether i am a carrier or not unless i do a specific test which is called hemoglobin electrophoresis and you must be knowing that all over the media and in glossy newspapers and everywhere women's magazine health magazine etc it is over and over being emphasized that people should have their thalassemia screening done during the school days during their college days before getting pregnant before getting married before getting pregnant and if they get pregnant if they have not got a thalassemia test done then they should have a thalassemia test done before the they go for pregnancy and if suppose even if it is not done then during the early and in the period it is very important that thalassemia screening is done if husband and wife both of them happen to be thalassemia carriers then there is a 25% chance that the fetus of the baby an unborn baby may be affected with thalassemia major and a thalassemia major baby would require blood transfusion periodically every month as long as they live but therefore it is very important that thalassemia screening is done in all pregnant women and if they are found to be both carriers husband and wife then we do a test which is called cvs or chorionic villus sampling and we can diagnose whether the fetus is having thalassemia or not and appropriate measures can be taken the other group that belongs are which is very nagging is autistic baby a previous autistic baby cerebral palsy baby or a baby with mental retardation of which no cause has been found many a times patients come to us saying that doctor i have a family history of somebody my brother is autistic or my previous child is autistic and i want to know whether this baby inside my womb can be having this disorder or not and this is where it is very important that genetic counseling is done and therefore this pros and cons discussion needs to be done it is always not the case that autism has to have a genetic background there can be other backgrounds as well same for cerebral palsy same for mental retardations developmental delay and therefore the baby who is already suffering or the baby who is already there in the family or the adult who is there already in the family genetic testing needs to be done in that individual first 
the reason for genetic cause has to be identified and then only it is better to do an amniocentesis or chorionic pillar sampling during this pregnancy to know whether the present pregnancy can be having an autistic baby or not. The last group of disorders which can be due to genetic background are some rare conditions like skeletal dysplasias like we call it dwarfism or cystic fibrosis, Duchenne muscular dystrophy or spinomuscular atrophy. These are big, big names. So these are quite rare, but these are osteogenesis imperfecta, for example. These are some of the problems which can happen rarely. And these are the ones which usually have a genetic background or they have a family background. It is very unlikely to have these disorders without a family background. And therefore, the pedigree analysis by the geneticist is very important, which means they sit with the patients and their husband and do a family tree. A family tree for three generations can sometimes give a pointer to the fact that what is the problem. And according to that, specific tests can be done and the pregnancy can be diagnosed as having the problem or not having a problem. And things can be decided. Now, apart from these genetic disorders, I know the topic is on genetic disorders. There can be some non-genetic problems in the baby also, which means that some of the genetic disorders may not have a genetic background and some of them are picked up on ultrasonography. So if, for example, everything is going fine and suddenly on anomaly scan at around 20 weeks, it is found that the baby has been found to have some problem like open neural tube defect or spinal problem or a heart problem or something like that, then a different set of problems can arise, a different set of tests needs to be done and therefore it is very important that one needs to go to a fetal medicine specialist or a geneticist and do a multi-speciality counselling and come to a diagnosis. I hope that it is very important for us to understand that 90% or more of the pregnancies are absolutely fine. What we discussed today is only about 10% or less but unless we are careful about this 10% there is always a chance of missing. And therefore, I would always request all of you to discuss very freely with your doctor and do all the tests and ensure a healthy baby. Thank you.